What's up, guys? It's your boy James, aka 68J, coming to you on this Monday. I'm super excited as I have a special, special guest with me today. Uh, his name is Patrick L. Riley. But before I introduce Patrick, I want to kind of go over a couple of things that's really impressed me with this gentleman as a person. The things that he's done is just extraordinary. Uh, and it's definitely an honor having him here on the show. Uh, Patrick's story is just phenomenal, guys. Homeless at the age of 12 years old, uh, all the way up until 17, uh, which is when he actually joined the Army. Uh, he was a combat medic. Um, he uh, civil affairs and psyops in the Army. Um, let's see. He also has a master in forensic psychology. Smart, smart guy. Uh, MBA at Syracuse. Launched seven business ventures since 2000. 21. He's an entrepreneur. He's a phenomenal guy. He's a father, a husband, and definitely someone that I have a tremendous amount of respect for his mindset and all that he knows with blockchain and crypto. So guys, welcome my friend, Patrick L. Riley. Patrick, welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, thank you, James. And it's an absolute honor as well. Thank you, my friend. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, it's funny because uh, one of our mutual friends, um, uh, Chris and my for uh, fruition productions, you know, I've been doing a lot with them. We instantly became friends. Um, and uh, they said, James, you got to meet this guy, Patrick. He is phenomenal. Couldn't say enough great things about you. Um, and said, you know, you need to interview this guy. And I said, you know, what? I didn't even waste, waste any time. I, I messaged you. We connected instantly. And uh, so I, I definitely appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting Maya and uh, Chris up in Alaska actually next week. So Oh, nice. OK, so you, you're going to be out there. OK, I got a lot of friends like XRP Bags, Berserk and many of those other guys who uh, uh, have, uh, you know, their influencers as well. They're going to be out there. So I heard it's going to be a huge show. The first thing, let, let's just get this thing started. How long have you been in crypto? Uh, you know, when did you get started and why? Uh, so er, initially, you know, it was 2009 and Bitcoin came out and I, I'd heard about it and I went, I did what almost everyone did, and I went, oh, that's stupid, digital money. <laughs> money. Um, so I kind of blew it off at the time. Right. Uh, but at, when I first heard about it, I was actually playing online poker, and I was doing stocks while I was in Iraq in uh, 09 to 10. And uh, while I was there, I got blown up and had a, a head injury. And uh, oh, wow. at, after that, I started kind of, uh, thinking differently and I started to reprioritize a lot of things in my my life and uh, working on some inventions. So with those inventions, uh, I started to realize some of them would never come to pass if I didn't have the funds to develop them and uh, right. to truly uh, you know make it a reality. So I started looking for the solution and I came across crypto and, and uh, really I didn't get into it till about 2014. Um, so in 2014, I, I had a deployment baby GT500 that I, I bought myself and I sold that just so I could get some cash out okay. and uh, buy some Bitcoin miners, which didn't end up working out. But I learned a lot <laughs> in the 2014 to 2017 time frame, uh, wrote up through 2017 and, and really was more in Bitcoin at that time and started buying just random alts that I knew absolutely nothing about, like most of us do when we're starting. Right. Um, but I, I started realizing that there was a lot missing from the financial ecosystem of cryptocurrency that was already in existence in TradFi. So that was kind of my um, motivation to go for my MBA was to, to see how I could take what I loved about crypto and translate that into a financial product and service and suite of services in the real world. Um, so with that, I, I started looking at things like burn as a service, which we do with Reaper and okay. uh, supply and demand or uh, um, velocity of money as we do with Ascension or uh, support structures and put options like we uh, do very similar to with pillars. Okay. So uh, you started these projects. How did you get involved with um, now? You, these are projects that you actually started yourself. Yes, they are. So can you tell me a little bit more about uh, pillars um, in those projects? Because that's something that I've been hearing even prior to being introduced to you. A lot of people in my uh, crypto for life family were telling me, James, you got to look at pillars. You got to look at pillars. Like, what is this thing? So I actually told everybody I would do a dive uh, because there's a. A time on my show, we started about uh, just over a year ago, and uh, there was a time that I was doing a project every other day, almost sometimes every day. I would I would deep dive into projects. So when when they brought it up, I said, "Yo, okay, I'm going to cover that project." What can you tell us and the audience here? Um, just you know some basics about what is Pillar and, and what makes it so phenomenal. 
Sure. So pillars is something entirely new to the cryptocurrency um, universe, if you will. And it's actually our most recent project. We launched it just uh, in February here. Okay. But pillars utilizes the RES, which is the Riley economic system. I didn't name it that. That was some of my uh, my coworkers decided it needed to be called that. I like it. But with the Riley economic system, what we essentially do is we use a, a cryptocurrency token as a voting mechanism and a utility. And then we do programmatic sales um, every two weeks. We sell up to 1 million tokens per month. And with those token sales, we generate funds that go towards a specific utility. Uh, with pillars, what we do is we back uh, all the different XRP ledger tokens that we consider uh, above board and equitable. Um, we've done some deep vetting on all of these projects and we back them in XRP and we place a buy limit order or a limit buy order on the market okay. for the entire supply of that token. And wow. every two weeks, that floor or the bottom price that that could be sold at because we're supporting that price, uh, every two weeks that raises. So the the PLR token holders are able to vote uh, which of their favorite projects they want to get more of that funding. And we're able to build up that floor and they will always continue to rise. Uh, with those pillar funds, we basically mm -hmm. will be using those in the AMMs uh, okay. to produce a passive income. And that passive income will grow 50% uh, to pillar token holders and the other 50% to the pylon token itself, regardless of whether they hold pillars or not. So okay, I got it. With that, we're able to make any main coin or any um, anything else out there a certifiable DeFi utility token. Um, and then with Reaper, we're buying it and burning it. And with Ascension, we're buying it and distributing it. So we're really squeezing um, all these different tokens out there in a good way, in a way that uh, benefits all the holders. Okay, I'm actually pulling up uh, Pillar right now. So it's PLR. Uh, right now we have, now when, when was the official launch date of Pillar? Uh, so Pillar's launched on uh, 17 February of 2024. Oh, wow. Wow. So this is a heck of a time to get in. I can see right now. Uh, let me see. Let me go back. Now, I, I'm not sure if that's actually the correct one on CoinMarketCap. Uh, I would have to double check. Is it uh, P-L-L-A-R, uh, P, and, and the ticker is P-L-R, and then it's at 0 0.006642. That does sound correct. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they, I believe this is it because, uh, like I said, I've had um, – I'm actually going to go over to the website right now. Um, so I don't, yeah, you probably can't see this unless you're, uh, you have two different, but it says pillar self custody, multi-chain wallet, low fees and simplified cross chain uh, functionality. Is that it? Uh, so that's not actually it. Oh, uh, okay, that's a, it. Okay. Ethereum okay. contract. So okay, our so website. Let me go back. Okay. Let me go back here. Yep. No worries. Um, that's one of the hazards of cryptocurrency is there's, there's many of the same namesake these days. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Okay, so I can I can um, we'll definitely look that up. I want to I want to keep going in regards to um, we're gonna go and pull up your uh, your uh, site. And we'll, we'll stay on that right now until we actually uh, find the correct information. So uh, one of the things that I want to do before moving forward with some of these questions that we've uh, put together, you and I, I'm I'm really taken back uh, when I meet someone extraordinary like yourself. Um, and your story, man. I mean, I can't just throw out the things that that I just shared as far as being homeless at 12. I don't want to dig too much into it. Um, but uh, the fact that, you know, from 12 to 17, man, that that's that says a lot about who you are. And I won't get too much into it because obviously we got a lot of questions, but I'm, I'm a huge fan, uh, um, even more so because I know the type of fight and grind. You know, I, I shared a little bit about myself coming from, you know, welfare projects, poor um, and, and questioning everything and fighting for everything that I, that I was able to do. Um, I kind of gave you a, a overview as far as my basketball background, coming from basketball, owning businesses for 25 years um, uh, throughout California, being on some of the biggest stages around the world, uh, and then getting in crypto in 2017 where we were able to create a multi-million dollar um, 
uh, position uh, in 2020, 2012, which kind of semi-retired me and my wife. And about a year ago, we started this channel. In all the time that I've been in business, um, it's, it's stories like yours that hit me the most. And I've, I've, like I said, I've been on some of the biggest stages, met some of the biggest people. Obviously, I have a, a background in the celebrity world as well, as well when I play basketball and playing in all the celebrity games, the NBA celebrity games and things like that. Uh, but for me, it's people like you that I won't forget. And I just, I just have to say, man, um, much love, much respect, and thank you for all you've done for this country. Uh, thank you what you what you continue to do. And we, we also talked about true wealth, and, and wealth to me uh, is uh, your story. I mean, uh, what you've been able to do, um, uh, the fact you have a beautiful family, the fact that you served for almost 17 years, that you started seven businesses. I mean, if you would have told you know, that story about a kid who was homeless at 12, that's that's one heck of a story, man. And I hope one day to, to hear more about it. So uh, I just want to make sure I give you homage and, and say how much I respect you and your story. Thank you, James. And of course, same to you. Uh, you know, it's it, it's really easy for people born in, in similar situations to yourself or me or, or John Needham to go another way. And there's there's a certain amount of fight, as you put it, or drive um, is, is usually the way I say it, that you have to have to really come out on top. Um, and and I, I have, of course, a great amount of respect for John D. And I, I know we're going to talk about him a little bit later. Yes. Um, but it's it's something that you you can't have anything but victory once you get to a certain point in your life. That's right. Um, That's right. It's just a, an unbeatable drive. Yeah, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I, and I think uh, for me, I'm really eager uh, to now uh, research and do a dive on your. So I'm going to ask everyone in my group from uh, JC, uh, JC to I'm sorry, JC to uh, Beekeeper69 to Liz and everybody else. Make sure you guys get me the information on uh, Pillar. I think you just sent me some uh, inf more information, the link on my uh, X uh, messenger. So I want to make sure that's something that I covered this week. I'll be actually doing that. I like to look into it. And uh, anyone like yourself that's, that started a project, I mean, with a lot of these projects, you have no idea who started them. Some of them started off as jokes. Look where they're at. So anyone like yourself who's done the things that you've done, you've got a fan and you've got to support me, brother, for sure. Thank you, James. You're very welcome. So uh, the next thing I want to ask you uh, in this journey of because obviously we have Pillar, we have uh, all these other things that you're doing. What attracted you specifically uh, as you looked into crypto to XRP and why? Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I said, I was more in Bitcoin back in 2017 and I watched um, I, I watched the charts and I did get into technical analysis and I actually advised um, some of my friends at the time that XRP was a really good play before right. the 2017 run up and wow. I missed it, but they did great. Wow. Um, so after that, I, I started paying a little bit more attention to XRP and of course, I, I heard all the FUD around it about it being right. an anchor's coin and right. Right. You know, centralized and, and all those types of things. So right. I, I hadn't really deep dived it yet. And then uh, as this as the uh, 2021 bull run started to roll around and I had just, uh, you know, Flair was doing their snapshot. So I'd kind of aped in the XRP right. uh, pre Flair snapshot. And then the SEC sued it, uh, sued Ripple Labs. And right. I, I knew intrinsically at that point that XRP was the one yeah. because I knew that they would come out on top of this lawsuit. And I looked into the details and I looked into who has um, you know, a background in ownership in XRP right. and shares of XRP, everyone right. from the Rothschilds to BNY Mellon to right. um, you know, the powers that be, essentially. Right. And it, it was pretty clear to me where this was going and that Ripple and XRP would come out on top, and here we are, you know, two and a half years later. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. And you know, so crazy, Patrick, it, you know, and, and this is, um, before I get into the next uh, com uh, uh, question in, in regards to John Deaton, it, it behooves me, to be quite honest with you, and I'm sure you feel the same way, um, almost to the extent of perplexing me, uh, how people don't see the value of Ripple uh xrp and what what you know what they're doing uh it's not like the government went after and i'm not going to name a project but let's just say shikaka coin i always use that as a joke but shikaka just some junk i made up but you know it's not like they went after some joke they went after something that they realized was amazing it solved the problem and many people don't realize that they actually looked at it tested it they understood what it was and that and because and, they, and at some point there's even rumors that they wanted to uh control it 
and uh, and and wasn't able to do that. So you know that's the reason that the lawsuit happened. And you know I, <laughs> I'm sure we can get more and more into that. And and you know the whole uh, ETH gate. And and I, I've got a couple of questions about that as well. But um, yeah, it definitely makes you realize that you're into something special. And then like you said, to, you know I've been in since 17 to sit here and go through all the the tr trials and tribulations. You know many people forget that Bitcoin at one point was was labeled dark money and crooked money and, and corrupted money. And, and, and I was asking this question the other day on my stream. I said, I wonder how people felt when there was a 60 cent Bitcoin and, and uh, it didn't have any of the use cases, the utility uh, XRP has. And, and how, you know, for people who are sitting here today that, that know any history with crypto, if you can go back and think about that moment, and I know many people wish they could go back to that moment. And then you sit here and you see where you, where you're, uh, I, I would say we're all blessed to be at with with uh, XRP, and yet most people don't even see it, especially uh, some of the big guys out there. And I think there's reasons, but I want to get your your opinion on why do you think more inflow or more people, let's just, just more investors in, in crypto. Some of these guys who are really big on YouTube, really big on other platforms, they're they're shilling all these different coins. Why don't they see XRP the way you and I and many others do? Well, so the mainstream, as, as I like to say, are basically the normies. And right. and if they're, you know, a, a large scale influencer, they're still basically a normie and mainstream and they're going to sell what people want to buy and right. they're going to lie to people and they're going to say Bitcoin's going a million dollars in a right. year and right. they're going to get more followers and they get paid more for doing it. Uh, so they don't really have any incentive to be correct and they don't have any incentive to do research on their own. Right. So because XRP has been in this long drawn out uh, bull flag really for about seven years now, um, there's not been anything for them to really grasp onto to sell to an audience that's just there to buy whatever they're selling. That's right. Um, as soon as we start running up here, uh, I predict before July, and I know we'll get into kind of near term predictions uh, in the future here, but. Uh, as soon as we start running up, we're going to see the the people like BitBoy and all, all those who have gone astray and our Bitcoin maxis and Pompliano, they're all going to come just pouring back in XRP and pretending they knew all along. And maybe they did, but they just don't want to say anything. Many have already, many have already started that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because it's one of the things, you know, I, I had a friend of mine who's uh, here in Vegas. Uh, he has multiple businesses worth tens of millions of dollars. And uh, we have a, a current business that we do together and another one that we're going to be starting. And he says, James, why are you doing um, YouTube? And it was no one's really asked me that before. But he says, why are you doing this? Like, you don't have to do this. Um, and I said, you know, Mike, it's because of the time that I was in crypto from 17 to up until when I started this just over a year ago. I was so sick and tired and really disgusted as I saw people not taking accountability for the things that they were saying. You know, you got these guys that maybe they were. And again, I don't know what their careers. Maybe they were. A manager at this company or, or maybe they worked at walmart and next thing you know they're these these financial uh, uh professionals giving all these people advice about you know advice about all these different things and some of the things you realize they're shilling they got their own agenda there's a certain narrative they're being sponsored and they're really not taking responsibility and the more i started digging into some of the things that they were shilling it just really upset me because i realized that people uh, you know, look, man, people want to know that you care more than they want to know what you want. No. And that's the bottom line. And I know as a young man coming up that had nothing but question everything. And that's why I always tell people, man, you know, poor is is is, is not who you are. It's just it's, it's typically the situation you're in or a mindset that you were uh, handed down. And so for me, um, that's a whole nother story. But I can just tell you that I question everything. And uh, so when I started my show, it was for that reason. I wanted to represent the little guy who wanted the truth, who wanted someone who was wasn't going to shill. Uh, who uh, could go to a channel that's not that has no promotion? I don't need anyone to promote my channel. I don't need any partnerships. Uh, I, I'm financially good, uh, but that was going to speak the truth and is going to tell it like it is. Um, and you know, I'm I'm a big XRP guy, but I'm very well diversified. But I always say the reason that I really harp on XRP a lot on my show is because I hate bullies. I don't stand for them. I used to go to schools and speak about bullying. And what the SEC has done, Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler, they say hucksters, frosters, and tricksters, when in all actuality, that's exactly who they are. Uh, when you look at how the lawsuit was filed against XRP, how, you know, Clayton was, you know, uh, cut a check. Uh, you got Promethean, Wang Chang, Chen. I can go on and on and on and on. But at the end of the day, I can't stand. I always compare it to, uh, I don't know how old you are, but I always compare it to the 1980s. Uh, there was a, a U.S. A US uh, Olympics and uh, there was this girl who was supposed to start as a skater. Her name was Nancy Kerrigan. 
And this girl, Tanya Harding, had this, this uh, plot to have someone mug her and hit her in the ankle so that she couldn't perform. And I really feel like that's exactly that, that analogy is what I felt. The, you know, Ethereum was threatened by XRP. They knew who they were and they wanted to hit the star in the ankles. And yet we still we still been able to hold the top 10 no matter what. We've been victorious. We're three and zero right now. And it just it really speaks to the volumes of who they are, what, what it represents and the opportunity that it gives you and I. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate. So as I was talking to my friend, I said, look, man, the reason I'm doing my show, because crypto allows people to dream again. It's not about being six, eight like me or throwing a football like Montana or dunking a basketball like LeBron or singing like Michael Jackson or Prince. But it's, it's, it's the fairest form of, of, of capitalism that anyone could ever be a part of. It gives anybody the opportunity to win. And to me, it allows people to dream again. Uh, your, your take on that, my brother. Yeah, absolutely. And blockchain really, um, now I'll, I'll get into this a little bit with the John Dean and Elizabeth Warren question, but um, blockchain is essentially a scale model of government, of a republic. Uh, right. So you have your nodes and you have your validators and you have your individual users. And that's very much like what the American Constitution laid out for our constitutional republic with states and legislators and our, our three different branches of judicial and uh you know executive and legislative so uh, that's really the same the same type of freedom of execution of willpower is right. what this country was meant to be that's what's held within the blockchain right yeah i love it uh before we continue on uh my next question which is going to be uh stern towards uh john deaton i'm going to ask all you guys if you get a chance make sure you go over to our crypto for life page on youtube hit the like and subscribe and notification bell so you guys don't miss any of the valuable information we have a phenomenal rolodex of information interviews uh strategies uh nothing's financial advice we have success stories and we have not so successful stories uh you guys want to tune in and uh, check out all that incredible information now what i'm going to do is get into uh my next question which is uh john deaton How, wh why is uh, John Deaton uh, running for Senate such a big deal, and what does that mean? Not just for XRP, but for crypto as a whole. Uh, his story, who he is, what is you know, and what he represents. Why is that big for crypto? Yeah, so John Deaton, of course, he he's got the name within the XRP ledger community, and he's right. also been making a name for himself in Ethereum and, and other communities uh, representing crypto law. And you know, of course, he has CryptoLaw.com, right. which is you know essential to everyone moving forward with uh, abrasion in the cryptocurrency sphere. Everyone who meets some sort of government regulation or resistance, the Algorand crowd, everyone uh, that happened to participate in Luna or get burnt by um, you know, FTX, they all yeah. want to know what is the lay of the land, what is the law. Um, and currently in America, it's estimated that as much as 30% of the population that has exposure to blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now, okay. for some of that, the boomers and stuff, that's probably through a 401k or a, a Roth IRA or something of that nature. But for a very large majority of people who are becoming somewhat politically agnostic to the left or the right or disenfranchised with the left or the right, they also see this very troubled economy we have with the trillions of dollars printed since COVID and inflation through the roof and as people face you know the inability to feed themselves the inability to pay their rent they're right. looking for those solutions and those solutions are in blockchain and right. john deaton has the the right position to be an authority on what that means for everybody else uh out there now i i don't know if you know this about me uh james but i actually did uh file the run for president in 2024 uh, you know, I heard, I've heard of that. I heard uh, so Maya, Maya and Chris was telling me about that. That's amazing. Uh, so it didn't go very far. Um, now, I will speak to why it didn't go very far. Um, despite about 440 some uh, news agencies, mainstream news agencies that picked up you know, my press release, the press release was put on their website you know, on Fox News or Market Watch or CNN, but it was buried somewhere deep where you had to specifically mm. seek it out. No one called for comment. No one uh, requested an interview. No one sent an email. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here in modern American politics is that the mainstream media is selecting your candidates. If you have heard of them, yeah. then they were selected for you. Wow. Um, so John Deaton 
has an ability to break through that because he has you know sixty to seventy thousand signers on his petition as uh, amicus brief towards yeah. the SEC, uh, and really in uh, in Massachusetts, it's I, I believe don't quote me on this, but I believe it only takes about sixty to eighty thousand votes yeah. for a yeah. Senate seat. It's not like a presidential seat. Yeah. It's, it's seventy five thousand. I'm not to meet, uh, not to cut you off, and I'm one of them. So I've actually DM'd him, and I joined that that movement as well. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a very small number compared right. to the national election. Um, so I think he can absolutely do it. Um, I just hope that there's not corruption to such an extent that right. there's not an actual opportunity. Yeah. You remind me of a gentleman, and I, and I don't mean this in any disrespect, but I remember a guy a while back who served the country, and uh, I can't remember what his what his uh, preference was as far as Republican or Democrat or if, if he was either one, but I think it was like John McCain. I don't remember that, that that guy as far as, you know, and I don't mean like you remind me of, as far as his character, but just the fact that you, you're you someone who came from nothing, someone who uh, served this country as someone who wanted to go out there and, and fight for the people. So, man, I tell you what, uh, if you ever run again, you got my vote. Um, and uh, now let me ask you that since you brought that up before we get to the next question. Is there anything else that you have a, a foresight or vision of maybe wanting to run other than president or do you see yourself doing that again? Um, I don't know if I would run for president again in the near term until I feel that there's a true opportunity for me to win. Um, Senate or uh, potentially governor within the state of Texas is is not something I would rule out. Um, but I will say that at this point with where America is in its, in its history and really its decline, I think we can all admit at this point we're declining. Now we could come back from that. We were in a decline in the 80s. Um, and we did come back from that. Um, but if we continue on this path, then I'm not so much worried about saving this country as how we build a place for freedom and liberty to live in the future, potentially after this country. Um, okay. And I think it might be time to think about that as well. Now, I see um, on your deal here, let me see if I can find this, but it says, um, let me open this up real quick here. Uh, pillars. Oh, this is nice. I like this site. Um, now, this site is going to be different than um, what I see here, um, which is Reaper, Fi Reaper Financial. Yep. Is there, is there a website for that? There is. Uh, just Reaper.Financial. Reaper. And then we have AscensionIndex.com and Arc.Institute. Okay. So Reaper. Oh, wow. Okay. So Reaper.Financial. And let me pull that up real quick as well. So you guys, I'll have that while we ask uh, more questions. I want people to make sure they go over and support uh, my friend Patrick here. Let me get that uh, pulled up real quick, uh, reaper.financial. Okay, so we'll start with that one, and then I'll share uh, your other site here in a little bit. Okay, so you guys can see where to go here, uh, reaper.financial. Make sure you support my friend Patrick L. Riley. Next question. Um, and, and this comes from, obviously, your background. You just started. Um, let me see here. It says uh, – seven business ventures since 2021, which some of those are connected to the blockchain. Um, what, you know, what's the question here? Uh, would you agree Ripple is a solid company and why? Because I know you had to do your due diligence. Speak a little bit about that if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So Ripple's ability to attract talent is all that we really need to look at. I mean, obviously their financials and things like that are solid. They've been able to withstand a, a hundred million plus in legal fees over the last two years. Yeah. Um, and on top of their valuations, uh, my most recent valuation of a company placed them around 15 to 18 billion uh, yeah. estimated, but I'm estimating yeah. that based off what they might IPO at. Oh. Um, so, with that said, their ability to attract, you know, former Treasury, uh, Rosa Rios, uh, former um, SEC lawyers, um, you know, that alone uh, speaks to the quality and, and the integration we can expect from Ripple in the future. And really, they're, they're the most legitimate company. Um, I'll even say more so than any of mine. I'll, I'll even eat that bullet. But they're the most legitimate company on the blockchain period. There is no one who comes even close. Um, yeah. Even if Elon Musk launched a crypto company tomorrow, he would struggle to catch up to him. Right, right. And it's so, it's so, and it kind of goes back to my original question that I had with you just moments ago. Why don't more people? And, and so it's funny because for so long I kept asking this question: Why can't people see the potential 
of XRP, what it was created for, and then Ripple. Because you're not talking about a company, like you said, they spend almost $200 million in legal fees. They're acquiring, they're, they're making these all, all these big acquisitions of like medical and, and other companies. They got some of the biggest partnerships in all of crypto. And, and like you said, they brought in All Star, an All Star team of just so many people. And you look at that, and we're not talking about a company that started as a joke that one of the only reasons it's pumping is because Elon's backing it. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to be facetious, but it's like, why aren't people seeing what this is? And I, and I said this before, I think um, most people who jump in, either they're going to get it late. Uh, I think it's going to be that, that, that shock effect, maybe somewhere between maybe three and five dollars. I think most people will probably exit up until about 10. And what, what I tell people is, you know, when you look at these evaluations, people, you know, they get so frustrated or they get so they're so stand off when you hear ten thousand dollars you know a uh, joe cast says you know for it to work the way it's supposed to, it was created to be a ten thousand dollar coin then you got uh um um jimmy valal and those guys saying twenty five to thirty five thousand which by the way i just got confirmation i didn't even i didn't put this in my group yet jimmy valal is going to be on my show next monday 12 pacific uh 12 p.m pacific center time 3 p.m eastern center time i just got the confirmation of this morning and, you know, they said twenty five to thirty five thousand and they give you a full breakdown on why. And there's so many other people that's taken it up here recently. I saw uh, was it Zach Rector. I believe it was that that uh, it was Zach Rector or either um, Lewis Jackson. It was both on my show about within the last two weeks. Uh, someone gave I think it was Zach or, or maybe it was Lewis, but they said uh, seventy five thousand. And he broke it was actually Lewis. I'm sorry. He broke it down. So I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, go over and look at. Uh, Lewis Jackson's uh, YouTube channel and get on his uh, X page because he broke down why seventy five thousand, and 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 he even he said at the highest and he says he's not saying you know it, for sure but if you just kind of looked at the 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 formula he hand wrote it out on a piece of paper he goes even at his lowest seventy five hundred now so you got seventy five hundred to twenty five to thirty five thousand and and XRP I'm sorry Ripple somewhere in between ten thousand and one of the things I always tell people I said look what if they only got that ten percent right. You know, from from Lewis Jackson, you're talking about 750. From Ripple, you're talking about a thousand. For Valal, Jimmy, and those guys, you're talking about uh, 250 to 350 dollars. What if they only got it one percent right? That's life changing, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 20. I'm sorry, a thousand dollars from uh, Ripple and 2,500 to 3,500 dollars from uh, from Valal for uh, Jimmy. But if they got it one percent right, you're talking anywhere from a hundred dollars on Ripple's aspect to 250 to 350 dollars for Jimmy uh, Jimmy's protections, right? So my whole thing is is that. I think most people are going to miss that 1%. And I said this before. Uh, I, I think they're going to be out. Most people exit out at $10. But, and the reason I say that is because everyone wished they would have got into, uh, let's say, Bitcoin in the early beginnings when it was around uh, uh, Ripple's uh, XRP's price right now at 60 cents. But you know how many people would have got out of that by the time it hit 5 bucks? They'd have been long gone. Long gone. And so I always tell people who, who tell me, that, oh, I wish, oh, man, I know I had this much money back in the day. I say, you have no idea the type of mindset, the type of belief and patience uh, that it would have taken for you to still hold on, be holding on the Bitcoin. Right? It, it took someone very special, and I know a lot have, but many, most, most of the people didn't. So, so that's really my so your your take on that. Yeah, absolutely. You you nailed it on the head that most people would have definitely sold their Bitcoin once they hit a dollar. They would have sold it at that ten dollars. They would have sold it at a hundred dollars. They would have <laughs> sold it at a thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, all of those psychological price points were easy places for people to unload that Bitcoin in the past. And it will happen again. It yeah. is going to happen with XRP. Um, so I, I know Jimmy Valley and, and uh, Zach Rector and, and Crypto Lulu all pretty well and uh, yeah. work for them on that valuation committee. And, you know, they, we uh, I assisted. I, I didn't do that much, but uh, they, they did all the work. But uh, right. I assisted as they uh, built out uh, about a dozen different models on right. what the potential for XRP would be. Uh, myself, I'm a very conservative um, projector in, in right. that sense. So I, right. I do TA and, and through TA, I am expecting a very reasonable $22 for XRP in the near future. Right. Um, however, based on a logarithmic regression and based on the last seven year uh, bull flag and the, the four year uh, bull flag before that, I do expect we could go as high as 290 uh, in this bull market. Right. Now, where that gets really interesting is that once we pass that 15 to 20 dollar mark, we are almost guaranteed to become the number one cryptocurrency above Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. That's where all the normies come in. 
because once you have a twenty dollar new Bitcoin to the right. newbies who missed out on Bitcoin becoming sixty thousand, they're right. going to see a twenty dollar XRP as a a golden FOMO opportunity. That That's right. That's they don't right. Miss. That's uh, right. And then we start considering the ETFs and the the national adoption and um, adoption by. Uh, so Colombia is putting all of their property deeds onto the XRP ledger. This actually started right. back in 2018. We've got yep. Palau, we've got uh, Montenegro, and, and uh, all these different small countries that right. are testing it out. Right. But it is going to move on. And, uh, you know, we have the Secretary of the Treasury yesterday um, or the day prior, Janet Yellen, saying that the U.S. dollar is failing right. um, and it's going to fail. And not only will her saying that accelerate it, but the rise of XRP and XRP becoming the number one cryptocurrency and having that growth while everything else is just becoming harder. It's, right. it's becoming harder to afford your house, your groceries, right. your car. Um, people are going to start wanting XRP as payment because right. it's the fast, the cheap to move, and it's it's more reliable. It's more steady in its price as we've seen for the last seven years. Absolutely. It doesn't have as much volatility. Right. So even at that $20 to $500, it's going to be cheap and relatively stable by comparison to the US dollar. And as I agree. we see BRICS uh, coming along, BRICS is, is still a very fledgling organization and they might outlive the dollar. Right. But they do have to coordinate a hundred different countries to all agree and rely upon the goodwill and good faith of China, which historically has not been a goodwill and good faith player. Uh, right. Absolutely. In their debt lending or in, in the way that they uh, counterfeit gold and silver or in the way that they counterfeit common household goods and products uh, right. on a regular basis. So I don't see, um, I don't see any other potential replacement for the global reserve currency right now than XRP. It won't yeah. be Bitcoin. It won't be ETH. Um, they're too slow. Proof of work. Yeah. Proof of state. Right. right. And fees. <laughs> yeah. Fees, it, it just won't happen. So yeah. XRP yeah. is the one. As yeah. As and it's funny because people would sit here and call me and you maxis or or and I started this journey with Tia as well. Uh, my 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 journey was kind of crazy because in seventeen I had some extra cards. I sold a Hummer, threw twenty five grand in. When it got up to like sixteen, seventeen grand, I started dollar cost averaging down. Lost all that money. Got frustrated and decided to become a student of uh, uh, the markets and TA and the whole thing. And so I got into trading, and that's how I said, okay, wait a minute. And then I got to a point in trading when I realized, I said, oh my gosh, I'm missing it. Is, is not trading in and out of these assets. I mean, I can take profit and things like that, but it's coming up. And this is one of the things I talk about on my show is it's five things. Number one is having a strategic plan. Number two is doing your own research, no matter what you hear out there. Number three is controlling your emotions. It's the biggest wrecker in all this, in this, this whole space. Number four is, is, um, um, so is number three was a do your own research. So it's one strategic plan Two, do your own research. Three, control your emotions Four, learn how to take profits and five, Always let your why, your foundation, remind you of why you're doing this and, and treat this like the multi-million dollar opportunity that it is. Uh, going back to what, what you were just talking about in regards to uh, uh, XRP, I just think that most people, uh, Patrick, they, they, the reason that a lot of people don't support XRP, especially some of these big names out there, and what they do is they don't realize that they're hurting the little guy who, who, who won't see value because they're trusting these influencers and in what they're saying is because everyone's looking – for the sprint. Everyone's looking for the 100-yard dash or the 200-yard dash, and they don't understand that this is a marathon. It's a marathon that, yeah, when, when all this started, Bitcoin's always been at the forefront, you know, but they forget at one point in 1718, XRP was at the number two spot. I mean, and it wasn't because they were sprinting. It's just because they had a great takeoff. And, and when you look at it now, I just I think I looked at it earlier today. They, they fell back, uh, fell down to like number seven right now on coin market cap in, in, as far as uh, all assets. But, it, but they're, they're just pacing themselves. But when you look at XRP, let's say you're looking at it as a runner, they've got the nicest shoes, the nicest clothes. They're not really sweating. They got a great haircut. I mean, they're just full of energy. They, they got a great physique. The reason I'm saying that they're, they're built to win the doggone race. And people don't realize it's not going to take a $1,000 XRP to do it. If XRP was 20 bucks right now, I'd be number one. And people don't realize that, uh, that it's a marathon and it takes time. 
Uh, but you name one thing in our life, one thing in your life and the journey that you've done, you didn't go from that 12 year old homeless kid to who you are today. It's the journey. It's the journey that they're set up, uh, you know, that they're prepared to uh, 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 endure and win. And so I'm just really excited to be a part of it. And um, I definitely agree with all that you said in regards to that. You, is there anything you want to add to that before I go to the next question? All right. Yeah. And I'll just selflessly plug here that uh, <laughs> or selfishly plug here that with all of the pillars, tokens, the pylons, as well as you know, Reaper and Ascension, because mm -hmm. we're backing those in XRP, those people who are you know, potentially missing the XRP because they're going to sell at that $10 or whatever it's going right. to be. Reaper, Ascension, you know, the RES and, and all of the pylons, they're still going to be backed in XRP. So for Reaper right now, that's about 440,000 XRP backing the, the ecosystem. Uh, so what that is right now is, you know, relatively small, about 300,000, somewhere around there. But uh, as it grows and as XRP becomes greater, that floor price, it has to go up, right? So that's the way that I've designed this ecosystem is so that over time, it's not get rich quickly, it's attain wealth inevitably. Over time, this will appreciate and the floor will rise. And if you are disciplined and you decided to, to hold out and uh, to participate, then you're going to win. If if you're greedy and you you just want that money, you know, God bless. I hope you enjoy your new car and your. That's your, right. Uh, <laughs> show. Yeah, well said, well said. And you guys get a chance. You guys see right here on the screen, right next to Patrick and I. You see Reaper dot financial. Make sure you go to her site um, and support my friend and uh, all the things that he has going on right now with Reaper and with Pillar. Uh, next question is, um, where do you see? And I think we kind of covered this, but maybe not really. Where do you see XRP in the short term, which I think you kind of said, and in the long term? Uh, if you could just kind of go over that quickly, we'll get to the next question. Yeah, so I, I see XRP short term between 22 to 290 within this next bull cycle. That's my projection. Um, okay. Obviously, there's a lot of room for, for error there. I, I intentionally do that because I'm, I'm looking at where I would take profit versus where I would uh, – you know, hold out and make sure that I reach my marks. Um, as far as long term, so say five years from now, I do see XRP starting to truly replace the dollar. I think this bull market, we are going to become the number one cryptocurrency. And the bull markets to date have been on a four year cycle based off the Bitcoin having. Once XRP becomes the number one, that's no longer in effect. That's no right. longer relevant. Right. Um, and with that, we're seeing a technological slide, um, really a, a progressive or exponential technological slide with AI that is going to force Bitcoin or, excuse me, uh, blockchain adoption. Um, so right now, everything that is digital and not on the blockchain right. is virtually worthless because it can be faked. It can be anything. Right. Um, the, the example I used with the Epoch Times, I did an interview with them a little while back, um, was that what happens when some malmeaning uh, individual with a, a computer and the AI decides to create a, a video of the president of the United States, mm. whether it's Biden or Trump, it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, they create this video of that president declaring war on a country or saying that they're doing something unethical or whatever it may be. And they send that off looking legitimate to a newsroom to the wow. newsroom's official release. And then Fox News, CNN is putting out an official wow. release from the White House. So it's only a matter of time until those type of AIs for yeah. blockchain adoption so that we know the digital ID and the origination of that digital content yeah. so xrp is the only one scalable to the size necessary and cheap and fast enough to move right. that level of data yeah. uh, you can do it on ethereum you can't do it on on bitcoin and you definitely can't do it on solana when it goes down every other day so, <laughs> uh, again yeah. xrp is the one 
I, I, sometimes I wonder if Solana and Coinbase are somehow related uh, because it seems like every time we have a bull bull run or something, the price goes up, Coinbase goes down, and and <laughs> anyways, yeah, uh, manipulation. yeah, yeah, manipulation, yeah. And I mean, we could have a whole conversation on AI. I mean, I, it's funny when you're talking. I don't know why the that old what 1980s movie uh, War Games came to mind with Ma Matthew. Roderick, I think it was. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's crazy how some of the things we watch like that or some of the things that we're doing with AI and robots that can walk your dog and model. And, and then we don't think that, you know, something like uh, uh, Terminator can be real. But anyway, that's that's a whole nother stream. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> so here, here's my question in regards to um, you're talking about uh, long, uh, short and long term price predictions. Um, you know, what do you what would you say to the people out there right now? And again, this is not financial advice. Um, but from you to them that are frustrated with XRP's price right now, because I just don't, I just don't think people understand what they hold. I don't think they're going to, I don't think they get it and I don't think they're going to make it. And, and I always had this joke where I said, I think the stocks of Pepto Bismol is going to go up considerably because a lot of people are going to get sick uh, because they're going to miss the opportunity. And I think it's going to be one of the biggest regrets because like I said, this is an opportunity for all of us to dream again. This is an opportunity that is not predicated off of a certain skill set, but just by paying attention. We always we all sit back and go, well, I wonder what my parents were doing when Apple, you know, was was, you know, uh, just started or when Microsoft just started. Or, or what was going on when when there was this crazy idea about Amazon. And but, you know, it, it's like we have this moment and so many people are going to miss it because of their frustration. And so what do you say to those people who are frustrated right now about XRP's price? Uh, so. First, you, you got to overcome the emotions. So everyone wants to invest emotionally and it should have absolutely nothing to do with how you feel about the investment at absolutely. all. Um, but that said, somebody sold Tesla in 2018 before it had its 2019 to, uh, <laughs> to now run up and became the most valuable car company in the world. Somebody sold Google, somebody sold Amazon somebody sold bitcoin at ten dollars uh somebody bought a couple pizzas for ten thousand bitcoin uh, and that could easily be you if you're not patient um right. now on the flag that we're in right now which is almost a seven-year bull flag and probably the most perfect textbook technical analysis you could ever see is the xrp charts uh that flag closes in late july so the way i see it you have until july to make either the best or the worst decision of your life right and i hope you don't regret it now you're talking about the flag uh on the weekly right is, is i'm talking it, about the whole flag so the whole flag I, but are I, you I, looking at it in the, the daily the hour or the weekly because I, I was looking at the weekly and you're absolutely right it's winding down to the very tip of that flag and yep. they and people don't realize what what happened before with xrp is more than likely going to happen again if you really look at how that thing's playing out it's crazy yeah. so I, I watch weekly um logarithmic and the all-time chart and okay that's gotcha really how i chart it i love it i love it so no that's that's a great analogy as far as for people man don't you know don't mess. It. It's funny because Raw Powell has this thing. It's it's a little saying that's going around. Don't f this up, and that's really, really. Even though it's uh, you know, you don't want to. I don't want to say it in its entirety, but you, people understand what that means. Uh, how important? Um, obviously, we both know Chris and Maya, and uh, their their story is amazing. I don't know if they actually told you their story. Um, yeah, well, they 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 shared it, and now what we're doing is we're negotiating. Um, not in regards to like anything financial, but just just how much of that story they want to tell. But it's an extraordinary tell of just being sick and tired of being sick and tired, working a nine to five. You know, everyone thought, you know, everyone thinks working at Google is this thing. And, and when when Chris tells the story, he told it. Uh, I had a, a show with uh, XRP back and all those guys uh, on his platform. He was kind of telling the story how he, he just saw no no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, uh, long term with that. And um, and so they started on this journey and their, their story is just so phenomenal, which again is why I think who they are and what they're trying to do with uh, this documentary is just so special. Uh, my question to you is, why is that documentary special and what do you think it means uh, to crypto? So I, I see it as a time capsule. This is a moment in time that I think will be very significant historically. Um, right. but to the financial world. Now I do expect XRP to become number one. I expect it to integrate and, and eventually replace world reserve currency. Right. Um, but in that, they're gonna look back to now and they're gonna look back to fruition films and this right. documentary they're making right now and they're gonna say, wow, this is what these people are going through. This is that 
adversity that they had to overcome uh, with an entire government, and not just one government, but multiple governments barreling down on them. You know, we, we don't just have the SEC. We have extreme corruption throughout the United States government, the SEC, all connected into, uh, you know, Wang Shang in China and uh, connections to Epstein and connections right. to uh, Mossad. And I don't want to get you kicked off uh, YouTube. So I have to get too much. But <laughs> that entire weight is pushing down on us uh, right. and the XRP ledger community. And I, I will say that if you're one of those people that didn't uh, succumb to what happened during COVID-19 and, and didn't bend the knee, and right. you're also here in the XRP ledger community right now, then you are probably one of the most resilient, uh, tough, and intelligent people yeah, I agree. in our current society. And yeah. I think 50 years from now, they're going to look back on on these interviews and look back on, on the documentaries and they're going to study us to figure out why were these people special? What did they know? Why were they so right when everyone else was so wrong? Yeah, people don't realize right now, uh, and I say this all the time on my channel, that they are writing uh, one of the most important chapters of their lives right now. And uh, how they write it and how they, um, you know, how they make it through that is going to be incredible. But they're definitely in the right place at the right time, so I appreciate that. Um, and by the way, uh, fruition of those guys, uh, we're going to be all out here in Las Vegas, XRP Las Vegas, uh, here May 3rd and 4th. And they're actually coming by my house because we're getting, doing a get-together Friday evening. And they're going to be filming uh, uh, here at my home, uh, some of the influencers that will be here and some of the people. Uh, so I'm really, really excited as I have Echo. I have, uh, I've invited Zach Rector. Uh, um, uh, matter of fact, I even talked to Steven Nero's team. Then he said, uh, they said that he would actually come if he's in Vegas. Uh, we, we've got just uh, Edo Farina flying in, uh, Versan over at Black Swan Capitalist. So it's going to be absolutely incredible. So I'm really, really excited about that. So for they, those of you guys are going to be out here in Las Vegas, May 3rd and 4th, make sure you give me a DM and uh, maybe you'll get an invite over to the uh, to the house as well. So appreciate that in a major way. And before we actually continue on, I know a lot of people just said that they uh, got in. Uh, we've got quite a few uh, watching this right now. I'm really, really excited about that. You guys make sure you go over to our Crypto for Life YouTube page. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and notification bells. We've got some extraordinary, extraordinary interviews. Uh, everything from every everyone from uh, people like Patrick Riley, uh, who's in crypto. I've got so many phenomenal stories, uh, success stories, not so successful stories, strategies. We've got celebrities on. Uh, we've got so many different things uh, going on, guys. It's been a, a pleasure uh, hosting this show and this channel for the last uh, year. Uh, and we're just getting started. And, and shouts out also to DAI, uh, Digital Asset Investor, who um, uh, one of his shows played a clip of, of my show for at least about a good 10 minutes. It was amazing, giving homage. Uh, shouts out to Lewis Jackson, who also went on his own platform and shouted out Crypto for Life and told everybody follows and Will Fix and Zach Rector and all those guys who've been supporting the channel, including Patrick L. Riley. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, the next question is, where do you see crypto as a whole in the next five years? And, and do you feel, as I do, uh, or don't, uh, um, uh, how important the next three to five years going up until 2030 uh, is going to be? Uh, 2030 is only five years away, man. <laughs> um, so I, like I was saying earlier, AI is really going to force this adoption. It's going to force adoption of blockchain as far as digital media, as far as uh, it goes with digital identification. Right. And I know there's going to be pushback. I know there's going to be politics very heavy around digital ID. Uh, right. because there always has been uh, people you know are too young to remember this but uh, when social security numbers came out those were the mark of the beast right and when uh, barcodes came out in the 80s those were the mark of the beast um, right. and so digital id now of course is going to be portrayed in that light and there'll be a fundamental opposition to blockchain identification um, throughout our society and at the same time that is going to be the largest push towards a problem solution within our society over the next five years to possibly 10 or 20 years. So I think that we are going to see all of the things that we currently rely on, our, our birth certificate, our driver's license, our business licenses, all of our vital records are going to transition over to a blockchain. It's right. not going to be smooth because we're talking about government. Uh, the legislatures are way out of date, and there are there are legislative rules that say that you cannot vote online or in any uh, medium that is connected to the internet. 
And so things like that are a huge challenge, but at the same time we have a, a country right now that doesn't believe in our own elections, um, regardless of which side they're on. And you know, paper ballots are not a, a real solution. So blockchain is a finite and verifiable, auditable solution. Uh, we're going to start seeing blockchain in almost every facet and aspect of our lives. And it's really going to start to feel like it's taking over our lives with its extreme efficiency. Most of the pushback on that is going to be either fundamental extremism um, or it's going to be corruption. And you're going to have two camps of opposition. Uh, so the people who don't want transparency whatsoever right. and the people who don't want to be tracked whatsoever. Right. But regardless of those things, techno technology has a way of marching forward um, regardless of what the majority even wants. And I think we're going to see it happen. It's a matter of who controls it and who develops it. And that's part of why I'm here developing things and wanting to see it come out in the right way where we have self-sovereign ID and privacy and ownership of our data, as opposed to the government just really uh, lining us up as cattle. Right, right. No, I love it. And uh, before I get into my next question, I went over here to your site, uh, which is um, xpillars.com. And I went into where it says pylon projects. Uh, I like what it says here. It says all projects featured in the pillars vote pylons adhere to the block constitution and boast a longstanding reputation for trustworthiness within the XRPL. Links to their project websites, pillar fund wallet, and token trust lines are provided below. I love it, man. It sounds like you guys are doing some phenomenal things. It kind of shows uh, what you guys are a part of. Uh, the ecosystem is it's absolutely phenomenal. So I'm asking all you guys that are watching this today, go over and support Patrick L. Riley uh, over at, um, uh, what is it, xpillars.com and also over at Reaper, reaper.com finance that's absolutely incredible uh let's get into our next question here uh thoughts on uh swift xrp from a political standpoint so really the united states has weaponized the dollar and now that they banned russia from utilizing swift through uh terrorists they've essentially made swift ineffective um and because you really just can't have global finance on a scale where there is uh, such disparity in control of right. the welfare of one nation over the other. So uh, Russia is actually doing very well under our sanctions. Iran is actually doing very well under our sanctions. And North Korea is doing very well under our sanctions. Uh, China is still on track to surpass the United States as the largest economy. Uh, and the BRICS have already passed the G7 as of uh, the end of last year in 2023, but they actually doubled their membership in terms of number of nations in January and February 2024. So we now see a situation where BRICS has control over South Africa and that water passage. They have Egypt, which includes the Suez Canal, and they have the North Sea via Russia, and you have China vying for Taiwan. Uh, so with that, the the strength of SWIFT and the strength of the United States government to manipulate SWIFT and sanctions in order to abuse these other nations by weaponizing the dollar, it's going away. Um, right now, Iran, China, and Russia have a uh, flotilla of naval vessels in the Gulf of Oman, and if they gave one simple order to those vessels, they could shut down oil shipping out of the Gulf of Oman, which is about 28% of global oil, and they would crash the United States dollar almost instantly. Wow. So we are that vulnerable right now. Um, and with Swift, it's it's a dying horse, and all they can do is just keep being it. Yeah, wow, wow. That's, uh, I love it, and I love um, that explanation. Um, the next question is, your views on BRIC Ripple and the Bank of Inter International Settlements? Uh, so now I, I alluded to this earlier with BRICS. I do think BRICS will be successful in the short term, the next 10 to 15 years. I also think BRICS is going to struggle to be successful past that. Most global reserve currencies have a, a shelf life of roughly 70 to 110 years historically. And I'm talking back to the, the you know, the Roman Empire here. But uh, 
with BRICS, we're going to have a lot of manipulation going on between the different nations who are basing their value off of a pot of commodities. So you have not just gold or silver, but also their grain, their oil, um, and things that are not necessarily fixed. Um, right. So anytime you have that many variables in a system, there will be manipulation. And we all know that China is very keen on manipulating markets and very keen on manipulating currency. Uh, so I don't think that China will be able to stay on top of that proverbial anthill, uh, because at some point its partners as the dollar is falling are going to see opportunity elsewhere. Uh, that opportunity will probably be in the form of XRP. I think most Western nations are going to have a flight to XRP. Um, well, because that is the, the logical successor. Okay, great, great answer. And uh, I'm going to go a little off our questions. We got a couple more questions here. Before I do, I want to go over to our chat here. Curly Bill asked, aka Squeeze, a uh, question. Patrick, where do you see the RES uh, in five years from now? So the Riley Economic System, or RES, uh, if my projections are correct on XRP, and XRP being uh, within the 290 range or a uh, three digit range of price would basically force or drag the market valuation of Reaper and other tokens in the RES up to the 100 million mark. Right now we're a micro cap, we're, we're capping between one to three million uh, for the last few months. So dragging it up by that, that much would of course be wonderful. So anything sold into that limit by order is then burnt. So that floor price remains per token. Uh, but that also gives us the ability to do a lot more, a lot more in terms of development. Uh, right now we are wrapping up development on our kind of our flagship protocol tool with uh, debt reaping, which is by holding RPR token, we would be making payments directly towards your uh, liabilities or debts, which is your mortgage, your car note, your uh, student loans, anything of that nature. So um, as we wrap that up, the demand for RES tokens is, is going to uh, accelerate and our capability due to XRP backing is going to accelerate. So we'll be really hardening the business. We'll be finding a physical location and we're going to start development on much more aggressive goals such as Ascension Point, which I, I know I haven't talked about um, in this interview yet, uh, but we do have uh, aims on space mining and asteroid mining um, as a means of rebacking currencies for nations that are otherwise uh, going into hyperinflation. Uh, love it. Love it. Um, the next question is, I'm, I'm actually going to go to a couple questions here in the uh, in the chat. So if you guys have some questions for Pat, let me know. I'll do my best to ask those, uh, depending on where our time is uh, uh, going at that point. Uh, your thoughts on the SEC from a political perspective and uh, from a coordinator, coordinated timeline standpoint. So the SEC politically is it it's really just a tool of other organizations. So they have a partnership with Wang Zhang, uh, of course, Gary Gensler, who was appointed by um, Biden to be the chairman of the SEC is formerly uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, CFO for her campaign. And before that he was uh, the uh, director of the uh, CFTC, if I'm getting that right, uh, mm -hmm. a background at Goldman Sachs and uh, Throughout his career, we've seen him go from um, the MF Global scandal, which was basically a rug pull of a, uh, a hedge fund by a senator, a Democratic senator, who um, you know walked away with quite a quite a hefty 1.6 billion from that. And Gary Gensler managed to uh, use a private email server, much like Hillary Clinton later would, and he managed to lose much of that data. He then moved into signing the uh, the check to purchase the Christopher Steele dossier, which was, uh, by definition, a treasonous act. And uh, he went from that to being uh, uh, appointed by Biden as head of the SEC after working with Clinton. Um, there's connections with MIT and MIT Media Labs and, and 
uh, you know, connections to the Clinton Foundation and he who did not kill himself. I'll try not to name him on, on YouTube. Um, and all of those things really say to me that this is part of a criminal organization that is solely focused on what benefits them. I agree. So the SEC, I don't think that they do anything at all. I don't think they pursue any action whatsoever Never. that is not to the end goals of that mafia or cabal, if you will. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I want to share something, if you don't mind. I, I know you. I don't know if you can actually see this, but it was something. Uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. Uh, let's see here. It was um, it was something that was uh, shared by Stephen Nerof. It says, meanwhile, uh, an Ethereum ETF is still on the horizon. Gary Gensler himself has confirmed that Joseph Lubin, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it says Ethereum Joseph, but we know who that is, Joseph Lubin, uh, acquired 9.5% of the ICO despite Lubin's denial. If Ethereum is considered a security, then this would be an obvious case uh, of security, securities fraud. Sorry. Uh, and then I'll open it up here. It says, um, Lubin, who wrote the terms, violated them by engaging in this behavior. His actions are criminal and a, a blatant disregard for his own previous assertions that such behavior was Im, uh, impermissible. As an employee, Lubin's status only makes the situation even clearer. Ethereum is a fundamentally flawed platform, and I won't get too much into <laughs> finishing that. But basically, what he was saying is, how did Gary Gensler know? And so uh, it, it was an um, attachment here from Mr. Huber, where it says, Gary Gensler uh, teach, or I think he meant taught, to the public that Joseph, Joseph Lubin bought 10% of the ICO for himself. What's his source? Like, basically, how did he know this? You know, if he, if he didn't have some kind of personal ties into Ethereum and what was going on. It says Lubin claims he never even owned half a percent of Ethereum supply. So what's up with this 10 percent? And how did he know uh, about how Lubin called to disguise all major investors? So I'm going to play this real quick. It's about 25 seconds of Gary, uh, I guess, back in his MIT days, talking about that, that very thing and mentioning uh, what Joseph Lubin actually uh, owned. Here we go. So, yeah, it's just like you say, it goes back to what you're saying as far as, you know, this being a strategic move. Uh, um, I mean, it's, it's really um, <laughs> how would you say this? It's it's, uh, um, it's almost like a like a, a mafia type situation where, you know, they know what's going on. They went after Ripple XRP for a reason. A lot of people got paid. It, it you know, so crazy, Patrick, when you think about it, it reminds me of the Sam Bankman Freed deal and all the charges they had of Sam Bankman Freed and the fact that he's sitting in prison right now for all those charges. But the one thing. They said they're going to drop and they don't even want to talk about is who got paid with that money uh, in Congress. And to me, I'm just like, what? And the fact that we've actually accepted that and moved on. It's, it's just it goes to show you how big of gangsters that are really running this country than we actually understand. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I do have some uh, some insider knowledge, I guess, from my background with the military and, and uh, you know, uh, associations to SIOP and civil affairs to to the level that I understand what was going on on the island and I understand that the blackmail operation was not solely about money or even power or influence, but to keep a, a very big secret. And I, I do know why many scientists, uh, MIT scientists and Stephen Hawking's and uh, Harvard scientists were involved. And uh, I, I know about the different FFRDCs that uh, are associated in keeping those secrets. So I, I can't, I, I don't want to get you kicked off of a platform. Yeah, no, <laughs> no they, they've done it twice. They shut me down twice on YouTube. They kicked me off and it took me the second time a little time to get back on, but we're, we're back. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I'll just say that there's there's more to that than most people understand it. It's not just the human trafficking and, and the, the vile crimes of that nature. It's that there's a, uh, I think the term most people are familiar with is a breakaway society, and that society is is kept very secret. Awesome, awesome, and and, uh, and you know, and uh, you know, like I said, that might be something that we have to tune in and maybe go to a different platform that won't shut us down and talk more <laughs> in detail about that. Number twelve, I feel like we kind of answered this, but I'm I'm still going to ask the question: uh, What 
other projects are you a part of and or building on the blockchain? I know you talked about uh, Reaper, Pillar, uh, anything else that we need to know about? Yep, so we, we covered Reaper and Pillar. So our second largest project is Ascension, uh, Ascension Index and Ascension Mint. So with that, just for a holding ASC token, we're paying out a basket or an index of currencies that are uh, reputable, including wrapped Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. And now we're doing gold and silver. So we have a AAU and AAG token that can be uh, redeemed in the near future for physical bullion. So basically you would go on our platform, you would burn your token uh, to one token equals one ounce. And then the number of ounces that you have burnt is prepaid in our uh, Shopify website. And we are going to physically send that to your location so you can earn passive gold and silver, which we're the only ones offering wow. anything like it. Wow. Um, for ARC Institute, which is uh, another of our, our RES projects, we fund charities, including Battle Dogs, which will be up there with Fruition Films uh, next week, Mobile Loves and Fishes, which uh, takes care of homeless uh, populations down in Austin, Texas, uh, the Innocence Project, which tries to free uh, wrongfully accused uh, individuals and get them out of prison. And uh, also uh, Rodney Smith's uh, Raising Men and Women Lawn Care, who basically travels the country and helps uh, kids learn discipline through mowing lawns for disabled and veterans and elderly. Uh, so we've managed to raise about $50,000 through ARC Institute uh, since we launched it in January of last year okay. uh, for those charities. And the, the cool thing about that is you are self custodying your ARC token. You haven't made a direct donation. You can still sell at any time, uh, but it does help the charities. You vote on which charities you want to receive the funds and we're paying you a passive income in RPR and Ascension token. Wow, for the wow. ARC. So That's instead really of just pulling $20 out of your pocket and hoping it goes to something good, uh, you're able to purchase something that helps you at the same time as you help charities. And these charities are very highly vetted as well. Um, and then our other project, which we're launching uh, Alpha here uh, end of next week is Box. Uh, Box is built on XRP and it's going to be a social media platform to compete with Twitter and Facebook oh, wow. and, wow. and others. Um, so the way that will work is instead of, uh, you know, a uh, fine quality gentleman like James here. Uh, we're gonna have to have, you know, a million followers on X to get paid for participating. The way that Box will work is every single user is getting paid for their interactions. So it's the number of Box tokens you own times the number of interactions you make per month wow. equals your share of the vote. And then we distribute and pay in XRP, even though what we're uh, what we're charging to advertisers is in us dollars so we are purchasing that xrp and distributing it to the users wow that's huge huge i love it i love it got me excited here i'm trying i'm trying to hold myself back from fomo and into all the projects there but let me stop <laughs> um I, and i heard some guys said that they couldn't hear the sound on the video but if you go to my x page you guys can see the link right into uh, right there on my x uh and, and hear what gary gills was saying uh, uh, wants to hear gary talk anyway yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question that really has nothing. And we got, I got like a couple of final questions for you as we get sure. ready to get out of here. Um, someone asked um, our thoughts on the uh, rate cuts on commissions for uh, realtors when it comes to home sales. Did you see anything about that? I kind of read briefly on that and I don't really know a lot about it. So I don't know if you even want to speak on that or not. So I, I haven't seen anything specific to rate cuts for realtors. I imagine that would be more based on the um, realty companies, you yeah. know, the actual realtor themselves. So that's, yeah. that's probably more of a, a, a yeah. niche specific. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Now, uh, one person, Brendan Dobbin asked, what other coins besides the things that you um, are in currently and XRP do you actually like personally? Uh, as far as personally liking it, um, aside from the pylons and XRP that you know, I'm, I'm obviously very heavy into. Um, right. I do see a future for XDC. I do see a future for Stellar Lumens. Yep. Uh, I, Bitcoin, personally, I think it will survive. I think it will do just fine. But I also think it's getting towards that maxed out in uh, multiples of its 
all-time high that it can do. It's it's kind of plateauing, if you will. Right. Um, Ethereum, I think, is absolute garbage. Um, yeah. But I still deal with it when I have to. Right. Um, uh, Chainlink is is an impressive project. I do appreciate Chainlink, and uh, right. I think that they have a, a strong future. And I do think we will very much be in a multi-chain uh, world. I just think XRP will be the center of that world. Yeah, I agree with you. I love I love uh, Brad Garlinghouse uh, comment uh, here not too long ago. I can't remember what what show he was on, but he says, you know, Ripple uh, today. He says kind of like thinking of Amazon in the beginning. They were just books. He goes, they were. There's so much more than that now, and so are we. So I just I love that comment. I love that comment. Um, as we're as we're wrapping this up, your uh, final words and thoughts. Uh, to those who are tuning in who support you. And I'm going to tell you right now, brother, you got a lot of, I've had quite a few people on this show. You've got a phenomenal amount of support, uh, not only from your community, my community, and all those who are watching. Uh, your final thoughts and, and some words to them. Well, first, I, I just want to thank you all for listening to me talk. I hate listening to myself talk, so I never <laughs> watch my own interviews over. But um, I, I really, um, you know, I, I'm not in this for the money. I haven't paid myself. I haven't even paid my team. I'd love to pay my team at some point. Well, but, um, what what I'm here to do is really to change the paradigm of how we live and okay. uh, to to flip this current uh, system upside down. Right now, you you sell your future to get a mortgage, and you're working for 30 years of your life. I want to make sure. it so that the work you did in the past is tokenized and provides you a future. Um, so all of my different RES projects are there to help build a sustainable way for us to improve quality of life. And if you're after a better quality of life and you don't like the system that we have right now, if you think that we're getting scammed by taxes and, and debt and, and the way that things are run right now, then the RES is for you. If you like the way things are, then you know you'll come around eventually. But I don't need you to get. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it, man. I just love the, the selflessness and the fact that you're doing all this. You haven't received money. You're doing it for the right reasons. Uh, shouts out to Curly Bill. Uh, he says Patrick is making the world a better place, and I think that's one of the things that I appreciate. And and it's funny because going back to my buddy who's a multi 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 millionaire, and he was asking me about why am I doing this. I said, you know, we're also talking about growth because my channel isn't bigger as big as a lot of channels because I said, look. I'm not going to pay for advertisement. I'm not going to shill. Uh, maybe I need to do some shorter videos because all my videos are typically live. So I maybe need to get into some short videos and things like that. I said, but it's going to happen organically because of who I am, what I stand for. Um, and I'm always, you know, I always say never sacrifice integrity for growth. And I always feel like the right people will come around. And so for, for, you know, those, the Zach Rectors, the Lewis Jacksons, the, the DAIs, the, the uh, uh, Will Fixes, the, you know, all those guys that uh, who are out there, Echoes and, and uh, even even Fruition Productions, um, to see the value, Chris and, and Maya, to feel like we needed to come together, it really speaks volumes. And I just think that that's the way that uh, I'm growing. I know you, you, you're you doing some phenomenal things, and uh, I definitely appreciate you, brother. And uh, I'm asking all the Crypto for Life family to make sure they go and support you, be a part of your community, follow you up on X. I've got your X page pulled up here. Let me pull that up real quick, guys. I am um, super shadow banned, by the way. <laughs> so if if you do want to know what I have to say, you might want to turn on notifications. Otherwise, they will not show you. <laughs> okay, so make sure you guys go to my my friend Patrick L. Riley's X page. It's right here. Uh, we're going to go and share all his platforms. The next one I want you to go over to, guys, and do me a huge personal favor, uh, is go over to Reaper. Reaper. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Reaper.financial is right here. A phenomenal site. Support my brother, uh, Patrick L. Riley. The next one we're going to ask you to go to, if you guys don't mind, uh, go over to, um, pull it up here, uh, XRP uh, or XRPillars.com. Uh, make sure you show your support there. Uh, definitely appreciate that. And then uh, last but not least, let's see here. What else we have over here? Uh, he, I actually have his, um, you can find him also on LinkedIn. Uh, I pulled him up there as well. And there goes his LinkedIn page as well. You can see right there, Patrick Riley, uh, serial entrepreneur, president of Autumn uh, Industry, CEO of Reaper Financial Finance, uh, fund, founder, uh, Ascension Index, founder, ARC Institute, founder, Pillars, founder, Box. Brother's got a lot of stuff going on, man, and a family man and all the things he's doing. Um, and also, don't forget to go over and show your support uh, for our Crypto for Life page. Make sure you hit the uh, notification bell. 
so you don't miss any of the phenomenal content. It's, it's a Rolodex information, guys. Patrick, I'd just like to thank you, brother. Uh, I ask everyone to follow you. I appreciate you. Your story is amazing, and I hope to have you back on the channel in the near future. Thank you, James. Appreciate you, brother. Guys, my friend, the one and only Patrick L. Raleigh. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys tune in. We'll be going live tomorrow. By the way, guys, we actually have – let me make sure I pull this up. I've got a um, – so if I can pull this up on my uh, X page before we get out of here. I've got a special guest, also a referral from um, Fruition Productions. Um, we've got an interview tomorrow. Let me see if I can find this gentleman. So um, when they said Patrick uh, Riley, they also sent me over another gentleman they wanted me to have on the show. He will be on tomorrow at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let me see if I can find this um, thumbnail here. here. His name is... Uh, let's see if I can find it here. That's Patrick L. Riley. And right before that, well, let's see. I had, um, man, I must have had that further down than I thought. Uh, let's see here. Make sure you guys tune in and catch. I feel bad here. It's not coming up. Okay, something went wrong. Re Let me see if I can reload this. Let's see if I can find this gentleman here. My fault, guys. I know it's a little bit of a pause, but I want to make sure I give this guy uh, some credit here. Well, I don't see it. So let me go to my cell phone and see if I can pull it up. So tomorrow I actually have on, uh, where are we at here? Uh, Crypto Miles. Crypto Miles live tomorrow uh, on our Crypto for Life show. Uh, we'll be streaming from the same platforms, X and our Crypto Live. Make sure you guys tune in. Patrick, I appreciate you. Thank you, brother, for all you're doing. You guys make sure you support this guy. We'll talk to you guys soon. It's your boy James, a.k.a. 6 Jane. Until next time, peace.